Double click, as you double click, it launches in the viewer. And now let's give you an idea of a very basic, basic edit. Okay, here we go. We're gonna make a new sequence. So go file, gently, new sequence. You can make bins, let me just show you that first. If you make a new bin, you can call it whatever you want. And you can highlight or marquee or use Apple to select multiple, whichever, there's various methods. and drag them into the new bin, cleaning things up. Open them up, you can see what's in them. You can double click, it launches that bin all by itself. And when of course you close that bin, it doesn't disappear. You've still got it there in your original browser. Now here's something important. When I go file, new sequence, it'll ask me for the preset. I'm happy with that. Here comes the sequence. And we'll call this, we'll leave it sequence 17, although we could change its name if we wished. When you double click your sequence, it launches over here. And here you can see it's called sequence 17. Now, if you were to delete your sequence up here and just backspace to delete it, it disappears from your entire project. So never delete your sequences because that's where you do all your editing. So let's try this again. New sequence, Apple N, and here it comes. Double click it, the sequence will open itself up. And now I'm going to go and choose a couple of clips. So let me rather choose that. As you double click it, it launches itself in the viewer. And now I have a more controlled place where I can literally choose the important bits that I want. Let's say we wanted it from there, hit in, and just as she puts the phone down and not a frame afterwards. So we can, on this jog, we have an ability to get frame perfect stuff. You can hit your left and right arrow. And your up and down arrow jumps you to the next edit point. So it's a very fast way of, of navigating. And your left and right arrow gives you frame by frame. There's various methods of doing it. So phone goes down, click. We might be cutting to a further shot that a close up of the phone that would then allow us to have continuity if the shot was properly shot in sequence. And this clip now, we want to launch, put down in our timeline over here, in our sequence. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can just drag it down. As you drag it down and let go, make sure you always have the down arrow because otherwise you'll see later how that messes things up. There the clip is, there's your audio and there's your, your video up here. There's another way of doing that getting things into the timeline. If your edit line is on the end of the clip, you come up to the clip that you've just chosen. So let's, let's try another one. Uh, let's use that one. Come up to the clip that you've launched. You give an endpoint. There we go. In. This is a movie about people on phones, no doubt. And instead of pulling it down there and trying to line it up, you can always just go across here and say insert and there it puts it in automatically and you have your two pieces lined up. You have an option to put insert with transition. That is just put in an insert with the transition, the default transition and audio transitions, which makes for a softer cut generally. So if, they, if you can use that, then use that option the best. There are key commands for it and learn those too. Okay, now basically our edit so far is, and let's get rid of these two, marquee it, delete it. By pushing play, we see the cut. Looks. Now that we've got the basics, we're going to look at some of the more involved things. Um, sometimes you want to separate your audio and your video, and it's very important to be able to do that. And so you would land up needing to separate audio and video by going to the 
linked selection, which as you can see there is Shift L. Very important to know. Click on that. When you come back to your clip and you click on it, you can then move the different aspects of the clip and it won't. Now, if you wanted it to be uh, linked and you wanted it to link, you see how it gives a little update there as to how much it is desynced. If you were to hold down control and then click there, you could ask it to move into sync or slip into sync. In this case, move would do it. And there it goes back in. And if you were to hit Shift L again and come back, it would be linked again. Or perhaps Shift L, you want to change the relative positions of the audio and sound. And then if you wanted them to stay in that relative position, so that there is a offset, you would simply go back to your linking button and when you come back, they will stay in that relative position. Very important to know how to link and delink your clips. More importantly, sometimes you want to delink sound. So I'm going to delink them and you see that this is a stereo track and we want it possibly to become mono, you would go to modify and you would delink your stereo pair. Now that would allow you to choose one channel of your stereo and you could then delete it if you want. And by holding down option and shift, option allowing you to copy it and shift to keeping it in the exact line, you can copy your one track down to the other. And then you would want to relink them, of course. So you would highlight both, go to modify, and release on stereo pair. That would allow it to once again be an integrated clip with both of them linked together. Now the problem is both of them might be left, going to the left channel. So you would go to delink them again Go over here, click on the top one, say modify, audio, pan left for the one, go to the other one, modify, audio, pan right for the other, and then highlight them and go modify and link them as a stereo pair. Now if you have, were to have another piece of audio that you then wanted to link with this video it'd be important to have them always stick together when you move them you highlight them all you go modify link and it will link those two together now you have to go back to your link selection to see the link and there they're stuck together and that's a way of keeping sync no matter what you do and of course you can change the in and the out points by going to the end of the clip and getting longer bits and shorter bits as you desire. Um, that's the whole secret about linking and delinking now. Linking separate clips, linking the same clips, delinking the clips allows you full autonomy in your edit. Let's go through the basic tools over here very quickly. Now that is selection tool A, which everything works normally when you're on selection tool A. So get into the habit of resting your finger on the A button and every time you use another one of these tools, when you need to go back to normal operations, hit A with your hand and it'll go back to, back to the, uh, the one you want. Another very important tool here is the snapping, which as you can see is N. Now that is like a glue. Let me explain to you. When you're taking your clip here, notice how a little arrow appears as you come close to a clip and things jump far too many frames. If you want to do frame perfect editing, you're going to need to deselect the, the snapping option so that you can overlap to a smaller degree and stop the snapping. While you're carrying that particular thing, you can just hit N on the keyboard and it will release it. But I'll do it on the, on the screen here. And now you can see that that arrow doesn't happen and I can get frame perfect control on choosing exactly where I'm going to drop my piece.